Okay, I'm just going to show you some of the parts in detail here up close. Jet housing. You can see this piece of pipe that's in here. This is permanently glued in. That connects the coupling and the cap and allows you a thick sidewall for you to drill in your tangential input. This is just a piece of one inch PVC coupled to a barb fitting. The first section is about four and a half inches uh, long and then uh, this foam diffuser is that same height. You can see how this is going to create a pocket for the water to come in and swirl around and equalize before it comes up through this first diffuser piece of foam. And so then after this you've got a piece of screen. This screen's got some buildup from service. I need to clean or replace that before I put the jet back together. And then a half inch spacer ring. And then the flow straightener. And this flow straightener is just packed with straws. They're packed pretty tightly but um, you don't have to crush them. You still want them to be a relatively round in shape. And so, uh, I, like I said, the easiest way to cut those that I've found is just to create a piece of template pipe, pack the straws in there tightly, and then just take a razor and cut them off. And you're going to get tired of cutting straws. It takes a lot of these to make a um, six inch diameter pipe full of straws. But uh, just pack them in there and cut them off and keep doing that and just stacking them in here until you get them all tight. And then uh, you're going to have another piece of screen and then the uh, last spacer before your output plate. And this is the output plate. You can see I've got the notch milled in that sets nicely over the uh, over the uh, cap, over the coupling and then uh, there's the um, nozzle is epoxied in. It's aluminum and uh, I'll show you a little more detail on how I built the nozzle in just a minute. Uh, like I said, there's a bearing slot, some mounting holes, uh, the holes for the uh, to hold the top plate of the uh, cutter mechanism, magnetic detent, top bearing, and a foam diffuser, just a piece of foam cut on the bandsaw uh, to the shape to accommodate the cutter mechanism, and then uh, a solenoid. This is the final solenoid design. As you can see, I've made a bunch of other solenoids for testing purposes. And I just made this out of a 16 gauge, I mean 24 gauge, 16 ounce roll of um, magnet wire. Now my first laminar nozzles were made out of uh, plexiglass. And uh, I switched to aluminum just for uh, durability. Uh, but um, you can make the nozzles out of anything you want. <clears throat> the, the, the plastic products are a little, a little easier to work with and better for prototyping. Okay, making the orphosphere jet is critical because it's the part that's going to shape the stream. <clears throat> I chose to make mine out of quarter inch aluminum plate. Uh, the OD in my case is one inch and the ID is going to determine the stream size. And so uh, I'll go over the profile of the orifice in just a second, but you want to drill that ID a little bit smaller than you want the OD of your stream to be because you're going to have to sharpen that down. You want minimal surface area where the water actually contacts the orifice to come out of the jet. So, you can see if this is the OD of my orifice one inch, and this is the ID of the sharpened edges, 0.5 inches in my case. And so I created this by first cutting out the circle and then drilling a hole of a little bit smaller than half inch diameter because I want my final opening to be half inch and I need to sharpen this. I need that to be sharp. You can do this, this with a reamer tool. Uh, like a little drill bit reamer tool. Uh, just run it down until you get this sharp edge here and you can take a piece of sandpaper, fine grit sandpaper and sharpen that to a point. Uh, your laminar flow is down here coming up. So you want this contact to be minimal right there where the water contacts the orifices that's coming out. So you want this sharp right here and then the water is going to exit 
straight out that nozzle, just like that. So you can play around with this design here, and uh, these this angle is not real crucial that you put on this jet, but or this orifice, but you just want this uh, area right here to be sharpened to a point. Well, I hope this video helps you construct your own laminar jet. Don't get discouraged and give up. What I just showed you is the result of hours of trial and error. And I put a reference to Mark Fuller's patent for the first laminar jet for decorative water fountains in the info section of this video, along with my email address. Feel free to send me any questions you have, and I look forward to seeing videos of your fountain projects.